Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to the Gibson Garage Speed Shop. I am Alan, and today we're going to be working on uh, doing the transmission filters in both my cars, the 300, the Chrysler 300, and the Dodge Magnum. But uh, before we get into that, I'd like to talk a little about what else we're doing today. But if you've been following along, you know I've been changing up the routine a little bit. You know, uh, I've been putting a video out every Monday, so it's not so much a how-to or just a how-to. It's more like a, a week in the life of Gibson Garage. And in this case, we've got the license plate box we got to work on still for the pickup truck. I will always try to keep a uh, how-to of some sort included in there if I have one to put in, just to keep those viewers uh, satisfied, but also what I'm working on too in between that stuff. Because I want to branch out, I don't want to just be, you know, like a repair video place. Which brings me to the 10k 10k giveaway that I've been talking about in the last few videos So to get more recognition in that area if you guys have been following along for a long time You'll know that I've made some mini bikes a trike a scooter. I got a quad. I'm giving all that away Just for recognition. You don't need to buy a ticket to come to the event You don't need to pay for the raffle ticket when you get there. You just got to show up but to make that happen I'm going to need your guys' support in the meantime so we can put together these projects. Now, I've got the 10K subs, and or almost got the 10K subs. I'm like nine and a half. So that's really awesome. I've been working on that for like six years now. But the, the 10K cash has got to come too by April so we can get those projects finished along the way. So even if you can't show up or you don't want to show up but you want to see this thing happen like I do, you can still donate of course i'd love you to donate uh you can do that by hitting that super thanks button down below and giving whatever you feel like giving by the way merry christmas guys okay so it is actually thursday now that we're getting back onto this project here i spent a couple of days working these blocks trying to get them as close to perfect as i can I've got bolts on the ground now but I've got this thing made, which is the receiver. And I've got these two plates made, which are made to sandwich this piece in between the two. And I'll use those bolts that are on the ground now, bolt it together nice and tight. And with the press over there, I'll push it through this receiver plate, right? And that'll fold all the edges up, hopefully without distorting the other part of the frame that I want to keep flat is why I'm building the sandwich plate. If I try to bend this on that little 12 inch break over there, I was worried it would probably rip at the corners and just destroy it. So maybe with a, some heat and a press and the sandwich plate, it'll keep this intersection together nice and flat. Only one way to find out. Let's, I think I'm just stalling now. I've, I'm ready to do it. I just, I need you guys to watch now. All right, we got the setup here in the corner of the shop on my little Harbor Freight press. Got it set up on these blocks so it can pass through the receiver. Like I said here, now I just got to get you in for the good shot. I'm not sure what's happening right now. Well, that's not going to work. We're just bowing the whole receiver plate. Dang it. Okay, so my idea is to cut the scrap up that I have left and place it around the edges. And we'll put it sideways so we've got contact on all four sides. Okay, well that was a bust. Uh, it didn't give me enough clearance for the hardware. The hardware's running into this part now. So I got some square tubing out there that I already had in the scrap pile. There's two 90 degree pieces. We'll just set them like that. Hopefully that'll be enough. Let's, let's try and distribute the load here maybe. That'll help. I think it's starting to bend. Is this starting to go up? 
Oh, it's working. I think it's working. Oh, look at the back sides folding up. The back sides folding up. And the front side is not. Oh, I need to get them all to bend in. The back side's bending and the front's not. Me. It just doesn't want to bend right there. It doesn't want to bend. Everything else is ready to give up. Oh, and there's the brake. Something's breaking. I'm gonna tap that piece back in there just a little more. Try to get it closer. Come on, you're so close to giving up all four sides. Why won't you? There we go. Oh, shit. The weld just broke. Oh, man, that is a bummer. All right, let's try this again. I fixed it. And I've got this spacer under here so it'll allow it to fold all the way up. I know that kind of takes away from the surface area that I'm pressing on, but that's all I have right at the moment. Let's just see if we can finish this thing, huh? I mean, come on. Just don't break on me. Just don't break. Okay, half of it's going in. That's interesting. Yeah, see, I knew the hammer would come in eventually. Look at that, mate. That's a Bobby Dazzler. Anybody fans of Oak Island? Okay, attempt number 25. Yay, went through. And hopefully that is the only time I'll ever need to use it. Okay, let's take that off. Check this out. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Give it to me! Come on. Wow. Wow. Ha <laughs> ha! Bingo! Look at that, guys. They're not a bad piece, man. This came out really good. I went around while it was still clamped in and kind of just finished hammering them over, touching the corners together. That turned out pretty good. Now we gotta take this piece and fold those edges over so we can put them together and make a box. So before I can get this to fit in there, I'm gonna bend up the smaller sides first with this vise break because it gets a sharper bend and I'm gonna take that where I can get it. 
So I've got a line here just about the thickness of the metal itself. Hopefully that sinks it in inside the 12 and an eighth inches or whatever. Oh, we're winging it at this point, honestly. Now with any luck, I got the spacing perfect. Oh, oh my God, I'm getting so lucky. It is perfect. Let's see if we can bend it. Uh, I don't think we can bend the lip that small over here. So cool. That's so cool. I can't bend the lip. All right, so I'm gonna trim up the bottom plate just a little bit, like a 16th off each side here, just so it fits inside of this. Just enough to fit inside of this. Then we can maybe just press this through the same plate we pressed the other one through. Okay. I got that thing shortened up just a little bit on each side to allow it to fold in. We're going to press her in. Well, the far side's going in easy enough. There we go. Come on. Give me the other side too. Oh. Christ. Okay, I got supports under there. Let's try to get the other side of this thing bent. Oh man, so I got the lid and the bottom together with a little bit of finagling. I got them to overlap. I'll just squeeze them together. And then I'll never get them back off. But that there is the idea. Yeah. Not quite perfect, but I think I can make it work. Well, here it is after some hammering and dollying and um, yeah I've got these corners in real nice a little bit of sanding just to make it look a little cleaner uh, but I made a box that does not fit a license plate nope this thing's super thin so I can kind of force it into place but the fitment on this guy is money. Look at that, it just presses right in. And if you think that I'm gonna scrap this whole thing just because I gotta trim a 16th of an inch off of a license plate, you're tripping. I'm keeping it. Just wish I could weld up these corners is all. But it didn't turn out that bad. If I could weld up the corners and clean them up so that it's all looking good that would be sweet but for now I'm gonna rock it I'm gonna drill some holes in the side two screw holes in the side that will also accommodate some brackets and then the brackets will go down and attach to something probably the tailgate it'll hang out the back of the tailgate like like that all right and now it's time to move on to the Chrysler which is well overdue for a filter transmission filter change since I did the rebuild I have not touched it and I put some miles on it that's for sure I'm gonna guess around 2000 I don't remember but if you look back if I go back through my videos I'm sure I probably said it in the one where I'm reinstalling the transmission right after it's rebuilt and I should go find that out but <clears throat> Um, we're gonna we're gonna crawl into here and we're gonna loosen those bolts and hopefully it's not pink because I all I can do is guess as to why that fluid turned pink last time which is the reason for the rebuild obviously you had a bunch of 
water in it, but where the water came from, I don't know. Okay, we're gonna start by unscrewing this end, try to let it pour out. My goodness, it's clean. Oh, thank gosh. There it is, clean oil. Not Pepto-Bismol pink, thank goodness. No Pepto-Bismol milkshake. Well, here's, it's all cleaned out. I just got to get the rubber silicone off of here so I can put some fresh stuff on. I was going to get a shot of it, what it looked like in there, but I grabbed my phone instead and did it with my phone. So now you're going to have to go on my TikTok or my Instagram and to see what it looked like inside of there. It wasn't bad at all. A little bit of black, you know, metal or whatever was to be expected, honestly, especially for how many miles. It's way overdue, like I said, so... Now we're gonna rub this off and get some fresh stuff and a fresh gasket on there. And I'll show you how to take that filter out. All right, so you can get these nylon bristle brushes anywhere. Mine's just about worn down to the nubs. Um, anywhere you can get them in. Okay, I gotta go super slow while doing this because this container doesn't have a very deep whatever you want to call it so we're going to just see how many times we fill up this 32 ounce super clean bottle and that'll let me know how much i need to put back in Already full. Okay. Well, we'll just add them sandler to that for now. Not a big deal. But that was a little over three. I'm gonna say somewhere between three and a third, three and a half. Three and a quarter, three and a third, no more than three and a half, absolutely. Quarts. Because that's 32 ounces. And yeah, it was a little more than three of those. So I'm sitting here doing a little editing, and I'm realizing that uh, I am pouring four quarts into the bucket. It's a little over four quarts. I'm going to say about four and a third instead of three and a third. So now I got to go back out to the car and add a whole quart. Gasket is setting up. We're gonna pull out the filter with not that one. That one. I think that's a T25. There's another light. Oh my God! And just give it a wiggle before the light comes out. Oh, much more fluid. Oh, man. Okay, definitely we're looking around four and a third quarts. <laughs> Ooh, make sure you get the, uh, not that it's old in my case. Ooh, 
but you might want to make sure you fish out your old o-ring pull a little something on that guy there All right, I got my funnel that's too big, and I've got my gallon of ATF fluid, and we're gonna put in three and a quarter quarts to start, which is almost this whole thing. I think that's probably good. A little splash for good luck. There we go. So my first attempt to run through these gears, I got nothing. That was, that was a little freaky. Down reverse, nothing, through neutral, nothing, nothing, nothing. Put it back in park, and then I heard something change with the way the motor idled. <clears throat> then I had reverse and all the gears again. So we're gonna let it warm up. We'll take it for a test drive, but uh, this guy's done, and that's how you do it in a 42 RLE. Now, we got to do the Dodge Magnum, maybe. I need to relook at the mileage and see if it's even time yet, but I'm pretty sure we probably put 500 on it by now. But unfortunately, none of that's happening. I don't feel like changing out of my clothes, crawling underneath the ground again. It's getting kind of late in the day. We got a little bit of daylight and sorry. So next week we will, I've already got the lights for the license plate. We'll finish that up and I'll show you guys how to do the filter in the Magnum. And then um, I think we're gonna, we'll figure something else out too. We're running out of maintenance stuff. We'll have to start doing something more serious on the shelf or start working on those mini bikes. Maybe that's what we'll do too. We'll start pulling out that stuff. Now that needs to have its own episode. So probably the episode after next, we'll start just seeing what runs and what doesn't run and, and uh, yeah, stuff like that. <laughs> but until next time, please like, please subscribe, please leave a message, please donate for the 10K 10K. And as, as always, 
Have a good one. Uh, football season's always so hard. Raiders lost. 